Hello everyone, how are you all doing? Hope that you're all hanging in there on this fine Saturday. I just really hope that your life is helping you to be fulfilled today and that you're doing okay, both inside and out. So here we are with another episode of Tier Rankings. But before we begin, I'd just like to say a big hello and welcome to our new subscribers, Jenny O'Malley and Anonymous Lion 51. It means a lot that you would subscribe to this channel. The community is growing fast. We now have a community of just over 40 people. And I want you to know that it could be a million or just the 40 of you and I would be just as happy as I am today. So I really can't thank you enough. But enough of that, it's not flattering Fridays for another two days now. So I'll cease with the affirmations for now. And as for those of you who are just lurkers and maybe haven't subscribed to the channel just yet, which is fair, your own prerogative, Hello, my name is Lily, and on this channel we do our best to destigmatize INFPs by providing some fun and friendly videos without crying. Today I'm really excited about this ranking because I'll be ranking the 16 personalities based on what kind of character they'd be in my fantasy novel. As I've mentioned before, I am writing a fantasy novel, well, I plan on writing a fantasy novel. It's been in my head for 12 years. I just have yet to put it onto paper because it keeps changing and I just want to make sure it's distilled down to its most pure and real reflective of me and my voice as an author before I do go ahead and put it onto paper. She said, making excuses for herself. And so this activity might get the creative juices flowing for me. So not only will it be entertaining for you guys, but it'll also be self-serving for me as all good activities are. I just wanna say for the record before we begin that I believe human beings are far more than 16 categories. I don't think we can be necessarily put into boxes. I believe we're so much more than categories that we see on the internet. We're unique and special in our own right, each one of us. But today we're just gonna be having a little bit of fun. So without further ado, I guess I'll introduce the categories. So the first tier is me. Sorry, main character. Hang on, I'm just gonna add. Is brave, fair and pure of heart. Has cool clothes and some kind of pet that's a sidekick. Okay, actually wait, I'm gonna change the second tier as well. The second tier is some kind of pet that's a sidekick. I'm imagining some kind of beautiful relationship that happens between the main character and the sidekick pet. Maybe there's some enlightening conversation. Maybe the sidekick pet goes through some kind of evolution towards the end of the novel and becomes their own main character, perhaps spawning a spin-off series of novels, which will be fun to write. The next tier is broody, misunderstood stranger who only someone truly special can reach. We all know the type, Flynn Rider from Tangled, JD from Heathers, L from Death Note, Gary from Pokemon. Hi. Wrote a letter to Gary once, but he, um, he never responded. Or maybe I dreamt that. Our fourth tier is the antagonist. As we know, every good story has some kind of antagonist. I feel like this might confuse my fellow INFPs in the audience because we're used to living a story in which the main antagonist is ourselves. But we have to stick with the tropes today because as possible as it would be to write an entire story about the inner workings of an INFP, that's unfortunately not the kind of thing that people want to read about, so we're not going to go there today because we'll just end up proving the MBTI YouTubers right about our stereotype. And this brings me to the final tier, which is NPC slash comic relief will phase out. It's not anything against the people who I put in this tier, it's just... You know, you actually can't write a whole story in which you give due diligence to everyone and their character and their personal journey as much as I would really like to. But it's just that that's not what makes readable stories, unfortunately. And it's kind of like life, you know, we live in our own heads and we're able to focus on the central narrative of ourselves and our friends around us, but we're never going to be able to know the inner workings of our cash register or the bank teller. And as sad as that is, that's just part of the human condition. Now I'll just state another disclaimer for the record. I actually think that I could fit any type into any of these tiers if I wrote them that way. But if I talked about how I could fit each type into each of the tiers, we would be here all day. So I'm just going to go with what moves me first. Kind of like the sorting hats from Harry Potter. I think I get him today more than usual. I'll start with ESTJ. Now, my first response is to put them into antagonist because of 
quite frankly, the stress response that is immediately activated within me when I hear these four letters. But I have to try not to let my personal feelings get in the way of this tier ranking. But the INFP did let her personal feelings get in the way of this ranking, and after 20 minutes of trying to justify not putting the ESTJ in antagonist, she ended up putting the ESTJ in antagonist. Okay, next is ISTP. Oh, sorry, I forgot I was meant to be saying my thoughts out loud. The amount of broody, misunderstood stranger ISTPs I've met in my life is honestly unparalleled. I just know that there's something deep, meaningful, and poignant behind those troubled eyes. I can just sense that ISTPs have this incredibly colorful world behind their exterior facade that they're just waiting to share with that special someone who comes along and cracks them. It's certainly not as simple as they're just an introvert who doesn't speak much. There must be something more. ENFJ definitely has big main character potential. This character has excellent people skills. They'd probably be a great leader. They'd definitely be sorted into the Gryffindor house. And I can say that with some certainty as I feel that me and the sorting hat are on a great wavelength today. I'm picturing someone like Neil from Dead Poets Society or Mirabelle from Encanto. Maybe they could turn evil at the end, like Hans from Frozen. Oh, I have so many ideas. I'm gonna keep them in main character for now, just in the interest of time, but will they turn evil? You'll have to read my book and find out. Okay, INTP. Definitely either broody misunderstood stranger or some kind of pet that's a sidekick. They could be the kind of sidekick pet who's there to provide some knowledge to the protagonist or information along their quest. Kind of like Yoda to Luke Skywalker or a Pokedex. Or, on the other hand, they could be their own main character like Sherlock Holmes or Mr. Bean. Gosh, this is actually hard. I'm so bad at making choices. I'm gonna put them in Sidekick Pet for now, but I might come back later and completely reshuffle this entire list. ISFP could be that main character who is given the task of reluctantly restoring peace to the kingdom. Kind of like Harry Potter. Wow, the Sorting Hat and I really are on the same wavelength today. I mean, I do make the rules here and we know for a fact that I am gonna end up writing several different novels. But the INFP never did end up writing several different novels. Instead, the multiple different potential novels ended up perpetually staying in a muddled up 2000 page Microsoft Word document called Book Draft. ISTJ, I feel, would be an NPC or side character. Maybe the protagonist's high school crush who is none the wiser. Or a mentor that appears every few chapters with some new gadget or spreadsheet or maybe the protagonist is a washed up actor who can't find work and the ISTJ is the landlord who comes knocking on their door every day asking for rent. I wouldn't know anything about that experience. ENFP has to be main character or some kind of pet that's a sidekick. I just can't picture them as a broody, mis like there's, there's really nothing broody about a ENFP. It's just Everything that they are is there on display for you at all times. I mean, we've seen so many great lead characters who are ENFPs. JD from Scrubs, Michael Scott, Jake Peralta, Marshall Erickson, Jess Day. But then again, we have also seen so many good sidekick pets who are ENFPs. Olaf, Dory, the genie from Aladdin. These are steering further away from the category of sidekick pet and more into the category of show-stealing sidekick which is another category that I could use. Realistically, oh, sorry, no, we're keeping that word out of today's ranking and life in general. Hypothetically, any ENFP sidekick pet would end up stealing the show and becoming their own main character anyway, so I'm going to put them into main character. And I mean, there is a lot of potential for some comic relief with ENFP characters, but I would never be able to phase them out because they just end up clawing their way back in. Ooh, for ENTJ, I'm picturing some really intense antagonist who has some really big plan to overtake like an entire city or something and is not subtle about this plan or the fact that they are evil. Sorry, not evil. We don't want to be that black and white. I'm imagining that they're not evil as a person per se, but it's more they've resorted to evil because of some kind of troubled childhood where they were maybe abandoned by their parents. And so they 
haven't learned to trust anyone. We've all seen that before. So there is potential for some kind of conversion of heart later down the line. Maybe, I don't know, some INFP comes along and helps them to see the beauty in life, the beauty in their soul, and changes them forever. Maybe they learn to slow down, stop telling people what to do, and embrace the mellow, poetic spirit that lives inside every single human being. And I refuse to believe otherwise. ESTP doesn't really fit into any of these categories. They're probably going to be the relentless scallywag type who lives in a trailer and wears knee and elbow pads and probably at some point in the novel ends up saying the phrase, it's showtime. I suppose I'll put them in comic relief because we will need some lightness to the story before they eventually have that heart conversion that awakens their mellow, poetic, free spirit. ESFJ is going to be that NPC who stands in the kitchen waiting for you with a pre-made pie when you return from catching ratatas and zubats. They're the shop owner at the local supermarket, the priest at the local church, the hairdresser who conducts the core makeover in chapter 7. They seem upbeat and joyful at all times, but somewhere early in the novel, as a plot device for establishing the protagonist's good heart, the protagonist discovers them quietly crying in the back corner of a room in their building and gives them a life-altering speech that shifts their arc for good. I would be good at that speech. ISFJ will be a sidekick pet kind of like Na'vi from The Legend of Zelda. They'll be there from day one as the protagonist's comfort, home base, the voice of reason, the light in the dark, the apple of their eye, the wind in their sails, the Niles to their Fraser, the Lumiere to their Cogsworth, the big multi-million dollar company to their capitalism, the existential crisis to their regular Tuesday morning, the tears to their pain, the coffin to their rotting corpse. What was I talking about? Oh, the universe must have sensed that I was approaching INTJ. Just kidding, we don't reinforce the stereotypes on this channel. We're not dear Kristen. I'm actually gonna put INTJ in broody misunderstood stranger because that's exactly what I feel they are in the Myers-Briggs online community. Misunderstood. And when the INFP, I mean, when someone special reaches them, they'll realize their potential for good and change their ways. I'm sure of it. They certainly won't take advantage of the protagonist's goodwill and turn on them at the last minute because they've secretly been planning evil all along. That would be ridiculous. I've always wanted to see what happens when you place an ESFP in the antagonist role. I think there is actually great potential for evil in the ESFP, as there is in all of us. Imagine an ESFP who gets so bored with life that they end up toying with people for their own amusement. And imagine one of those people with whom they toy ends up falling in love with them and leaving them a note on Valentine's Day. And then imagine the ESFP burns that note with their friends and they laugh about it and their cackles can be heard from all the nearby classrooms. Or imagine an ESFP so incapable of nuance that she makes a YouTube channel on which she airs all of her grievances about the people in her life. This is the stuff of true potential evil. INFJ could easily be the main character. I'm picturing a diary style confession kind of novel written in first person where all of their inner thoughts are on display for everyone to read. Ironically that's probably an INFJ's worst nightmare but I don't care. I think I could embody an INFJ quite well, actually. I think I've worked them out. Like, this whole thing about INFJs being a big mystery is just not true. It's just another stereotype that has to be taken down, folks. <laughs> no, for real, this is serious stuff we're talking about. The INFJ would just be one of those lost souls who's trying to find their place in the world. They'd probably get some powerful monologue or some big I can moment where they take a step that feels big to them but is actually insignificant to others but it would still absolutely get some beautiful background music when it's eventually and inevitably adapted into film. Oh, no question, ENTP is definitely some broody misunderstood stranger. There will be scenes of them winning the crowd, but then there'll be contrasting scenes of them wandering the streets alone at night, cigarette in hand, with some real noir-ish influence going on. Maybe, and this is just an idea, that someone special comes along and changes them through the turbulent but powerful throes of love. Maybe the ENTP steps up to the plate and chooses love over the grippingly intrusive thoughts of nihilism that plague them daily. Or maybe they end up like the Joker, 
which would actually be beautifully ironic in a poetic sort of way. And finally, we've come to the last type. Gosh, this has actually been so much fun. I kind of don't want to stop. You know what? Maybe I'm going to make more tier ranking videos. But the INFP never did do more tier ranking videos. Instead, she forgot about the channel after getting a job at a local cheesecake shop, at which her crush on a fellow waiter took up the majority of her creative energy thereafter. I think we INFPs are probably a little bit too complex to fit into one character. And I know you guys understand that. On one hand, we'd make really good main characters, but then on the other hand, we are absolutely the brooding misunderstood type. But ironically, the only special someone who would be able to reach us is us. So I fear that if I put us into that category, we'll just be doomed to stay in our melancholy forever. <sighs> but our melancholy is what makes us us and what makes us beautiful. So beautiful. And I just need you guys to know that, that that's how I see you. And if you have a mirror nearby, look into it and say to your reflection, you are beautiful. Devote more time to looking at yourself in the reflection and saying you are beautiful. Oh, cause you are. And the Oscar goes to... Oh, this is such a hard one to place. I feel like I want to merge the main character and broody misunderstood stranger categories, but I can't make an exception for my type. You know what? I think I need a bit of a creative break, so I'm just going to quickly go and grab some tea and biscuits, and then I'll be right back to finish the ranking. But the INFP never did.